Hey up and welcome to a longer confident cuppa. Um, hello there. Um, today's question. Yes. Uh, it's a very similar question we got from two different people. Right. One is Simon Anderton. He's a copywriter. And the other, one, the other one is um, Andy Green, who's a friend of the Confident Club and has been for many years. Well, not just Confident Club, he's a friend of mine as yeah, well. Hello, Andy. Uh, I'm going to praise it because they were both quite long questions. Right. Uh, but the question, praise version, was. Yes. If you said question again, I'm going to charge you five pounds a word. What was it? It was, this is that, you ready? Yes. How do we instill confidence in other people? Belting question that is mm. deep and profound. That's why we thought we'd chat about it for a yeah, bit longer. Yeah. Because we talk about self confidence a lot, don't we? Like, how do yeah. I get more confident? But mm. uh, how do you how do you help or enable other people to be more confident, curly? Well, I like the fact you said enable. Oh, do you? Because from my perspective, when I uh, when I used to be a partner in a firm of chartered accountants, we employed a lot of young people. We used to recruit them at eighteen with A levels. So we're very bright, but often, often lacking in confidence. So just straight into workplace. So I saw my role as an enabler. Okay. Or coach or mentor. Yeah. Um, Because it's not something that, you don't do something to them, do you? They have to do it themselves. Yes. You've got to encourage them. Um, And so another answer to this question is, it also depends very much on the person. Yes. So I can think of one guy that we had called uh, Mark. A uh, very bright guy, but very, very shy. Yes. When he first arrived, he couldn't even pick up the phone and speak to a client. He That's was how so scared worried. he was, yeah. So what I did with him was I sort of demonstrated from the front, led from the front, and we encouraged him a lot. So I say, right, Mark, I'll make the phone call, but you just listen. Yeah. Or Mark, I'm having this meeting with a client. You just come and sit down with me. And then eventually became brave enough. And uh, he did make a phone call. He went, oh, actually, that wasn't too bad. Um, so, so that was good. That was baby steps, and that yeah. works with a lot of so little people, wins, little, little yeah. wins to give them confidence about themselves. Um, but sometimes it's on the other foot as well, isn't it? It's about just encouraging them, maybe pushing them. On the workshop, we talk about comfort zone a lot, and it's encouraging them to step outside of that and and realise. And I think a lot of employers maybe. And, and not so kind as we used to be because we used to say to them look you can't fail you might go out there and you know it might you might not get what you the result you expected but that's fine you're not going to get it right every time yeah and i think giving people permission encourages them because if they think that every time they've got to get it right then it puts the, they put themselves under a lot of pressure right well here's the thing you're right very few companies do that mm. uh, a very few most people if you st- if you're watching this and you still have appraisals what's going on <laughs> Yeah. Appraisals don't work, so it's be a creative director, Curly. You were an accountant, I was a creative director, mm-hmm. so that meant doing people's appraisals. But we didn't call them appraisals because I hated that. Because appraisal all says, first of all, I'm going to appraise you. Oh, yes, look yes. at you, look at me, and I'm going to say. And it was always, you did it once a year, and you'd always, and what does this say? People went, go on a different topic now, appraisals, yeah. but it's relevant. You said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a bit busy. I'll put your appraisal off a bit. What does that say to somebody? Oh, first of all, message, is it? but secondly, do it once a year, year, and all that happens is they remember that the, the mistake you made mm-hmm. last week, and we talk about that, and it's all looking backwards. Yeah. Whereas I think a better term would be, we'll call it like development discussion. Right? This yeah. is about the future. We're going to spend twenty percent at all looking back because we've got together a little and often, right? So we used to have development discussions, yeah. right? And one of the questions I used to say to people in that development, one of my key questions was. Um, have you fallen off your bike this year? And if not, why not? And that was our shorthand yeah, that's for great. that. But yeah. we had to create an atmosphere for that to say it's okay to what some people might call fail, right? So I'm not saying telling my team, go out and deliver and make a mistake. But what I'm saying is, if you haven't made a mistake this year, there's something not right here. Yeah. Uh, in Silicon Valley, back in the day, if you want to get a job in Silicon Valley, all the top sort of designer places that, you know, that were doing all the kind of sexy stuff, They'd want to look at your CV, and if you didn't have some major cock up on your CV, they wouldn't give you a job interview because they want you being playing it too safe. Right, so that's great. That's two different companies then that yeah. encouraged our people to at least have a go. Yeah, but you've got to tell them, you know. So, but I think the analogy of falling off your bike's right. So again, back to how do you get in, get 
build or enable competence of other people. It's just like with little kids, isn't it? So the simple thing, you know, it's a bit hackneyed, it's a bit of a femme bell doing the cliche bell. It's like learning to ride a bike. It's that. What you need is somebody behind you that you trust who encourages yeah. you yeah. and says, go on, you can do it. And then, you know, you might fall off and gives you really good feedback and goes, do you know what I think happened there? You wobbled a bit to the left, mm. you know, get back on. So it's about encouragement and accurate feedback and having the atmosphere. So that's the first point, right? Yes. Okay. What else do you have to say about? Well, the other thing that came to mind when we were talking. Another thing that we did in our practice, which wasn't my idea, one of one of the uh, more junior people came up with it. Yes. Was to have a buddy. So we buddy them up with somebody so similar That's to what good. you were just saying there. Yes. So somebody that was maybe two years older, but yes. still very young compared to me. Yeah. Um, that they could just go to. Um, that worked. That was brilliant. That worked really, really, yeah. really, really well. And they might talk to that person to share things with that person might not share with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So going the other way then is, um, I think, again, it's about leadership. Yes. And it's about you being a great leader. More about maybe that at the end about uh, how great leaders can can inspire and instill confidence. But I think often it's about maybe spotting something in somebody else they haven't seen in themselves. So for me, the big kind of when I look back, you know, value of insight and all that was when I was in the Scouts yeah. and I wasn't, I loved football, but I wasn't particularly good at it. I could never get in the school team. Um, I wasn't good enough to get in the school team, but you could get in the, the Scouts team because you're in Scouts, right? Yeah. And it was when I was, I'd, I'd probably be 11, 12, and the Scoutmaster said, you're captain from now on. And I'm thinking, what, really? And I thought, what, like for one game? Mm. And you know, you're captain. And I kind of, and I thought, right, I'm captain. So I started acting like yeah, captain. Yeah. I'm not sure it made me a better footballer, no, no. but I was a good captain. And yeah. it giving me the responsibility. So sometimes I think appropriate coaches are going, you can do this. A bit like riding back in, but it's like, give them so, in other words, give them some responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then another thing that sits with that is Clive Rand, who was my first boss, great creative director. First thing he said to me was, my goal for you is for you to have my job. That's the first thing he said to yeah, me. And I went, what do you mean? He said, I want you to have my job. I said, well, what will you do? He said, I don't know. I'll have someone else look come along by that. But to be able to do that, you'd yeah. have to be able to do this, that, and other. But day one, he's already showing confidence in me that one day I could do his job. Yeah. Well, I used to tell our youngsters when they started, young people, I have to call them, young yes. people when they started, about what I used to call um, our champagne moment. Right. So the champagne moment was um, after a long, hard slog. Sometimes with their levels, it can take five to six years to qualify. Wow. Um, but the day that those people qualified, out of my own money and out of the practice, I used to buy them a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Because for me, it was, I felt really good about it. But for them, it was a fantastic personal achievement. So celebrating Not only it. just to have qualified, but to have developed as a person with their confidence as well. So yeah, yeah celebration, that's yeah. a good thing to do. So I think, finally then, from my point of view, I think to summarise what I would say is, I think it's about creating a, again, fancy word, culture, atmosphere of confidence. Oh. And I think a big part of instilling confidence in the people is leadership, whether that's as a parent yes. or a partner in an accountancy firm yeah. or a creative director. Yeah. I think it's a big part of that. Now, you'll know, those people working with me, that my favourite definition of leadership, Curly, is yes. what? I say you don't know, dear. I used to, but I can't remember. It's, well, there's many. It's the transference of emotion. Oh, emotion. Yeah. The and transference I, of emotion. Yeah, yeah. transference of emotion. And I think confidence is an emotion. So we're talking about how do you instill confidence in other people, but what emotion do you transfer? So I thought, I'm excited because look, I've got an iPad Pro. Oh, look at you. What have you got, right? If only I could turn it on, Curly. Yeah. Right? Is it face Face ID. Don't recognise you. What glasses are those? I'll have to put my code in, right? So I've got a speech here, right, from uh, General Bernard Montgomery. Now, those, this is one for youngsters, Berry, Second World War, right? And uh, we've been getting our, uh, our bottoms kicked out in the desert in, in Africa during the war. And then he turned up, right, and he gave a speech to the troops. I'm not going to read the whole speech, big speech here. Google it, right? It just but, says at the top there. Montgomery, we will stand and fight here. We will stand and fight here. Good like. phrase that pays, right? Yeah. But I think the point I'm making here is how he went with a load of people <laughs> who'd, who'd been getting their asses kicked and were, if you like, the, mm. the morale was down. And through one speech, he turned it around. But first of all, he just said at the beginning, I want to first of all introduce myself to you. You do not know me. I do not know you. But we have got to work together. Mm. Therefore, we must understand each other and we must have confidence in each other. Yes. So he's already saying that, right? Not too aware confidence as well, yeah. isn't it? And then like at that. the end, and it goes on or whatever. And at the yeah. end, basically, now whether he believed this or not, because they were fighting Rommel, and Rommel was like a, a 
pretty good general for the Germans, right? So whether he believed this or not, but he said it. So sometimes it's, it's saying, I believe this, so you can believe it. Yeah. Um, so he said at the end, the great point to remember is that we are going to finish with this chap, Rommel, once and for all. It will be quite easy. There is no doubt about it. He's definitely a nuisance. <laughs> Therefore, we will hit him a crack and finish with him. And I think because he demonstrated he believed that, yeah. they believed it and therefore they were confident and they did go out and hit him a crack. Excellent. So for so maybe instilling comms is all about just what kind of a leader are you? Yeah. Uh, and on that quite longer break, you've had enough, now get back to work, right? <laughs> you've had enough of, of a coffee break now. I'll see you there. <laughs> Bye.